Okay, now look at another example of the spherical triple integration. Let me just remind you all, if you're in my class, watching all the episodes, binge watching, this is not the way to learn it. You've got to go practice between. And clearly I have not been emphasizing the ability to integrate. I've been focusing on can you set up these integrals that can measure something in the physical world? So, without further ado, let's check out this next example. So we have a solid bounded by a sphere, radius 5, and the region of that sphere that is above, that's right, this is a cone, above the cone. And just to make it a little bit interesting, we're going to calculate the mass, not the volume. And this is our density function. So we have several small tasks to complete before um, we're finished, but most of the tasks are not of a long nature, but they're all important. So first thing I'm gonna do is as usual, uh, let me provide a sketch. Right, circle with a belt on, and we'll call that the y-axis and the x-axis and the z-axis. And within the sphere is a cone. Now it's very clear that my Artistry is not up to, to par. So we're looking at this. So it's the cone with the spherical cap on top, or think of it as a cone with ice cream or an icy on top of it. So radius of the sphere is five. If you recall, I've been using the top view for identifying values of theta. Theta resides in our xy plane, or when z is zero. And we should be able to determine from looking at this picture that it rotates all the way around the z-axis. So the top view is a circle. And another item from previous examples is that this circle has a smaller radius than five. Whatever that radius is, that radius is less than five. But until I know that I need the radius, I'm not gonna find it. Um, I do need theta, and theta goes from zero to two pi. So that takes care of the rotating around the z-axis part of this three-dimensional picture. I've also been using the side view, z-axis and y-axis. The x-axis would be pointing straight out the camera, so to speak. And this side view should look something like this, where that's five units and this is five units because we're looking at a part of the sphere that happens to be above this cone. And the reason I'm not drawing the other side is theta already tells me that I'm gonna rotate this all the way around the z-axis. I only need this so long as it takes me to find two items and one is my angle phi. Phi is measured from the positive z-axis down. Zero, two, and I claim that it's pi over four. If you need um, more about how to prove that particular statement, um, we're gonna need to do a little bit more work with our um, picture. I think we've, we've uh, identified how the cones at a 45 degree angle in a previous video, but I'm not gonna do it right now.
but put that on your list of questions to ask um, when the time comes if you need it. The other thing I'm going to need, if you recall, if I'm going to calculate the mass when I set up my triple integration, I need my density function, rho of x, y, z, and then the volume component in spherical is rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. And now it gives me a perfect opportunity to mourn something that happens in language. And even in the language of mathematics, sometimes things are not perfect. The symbol rho has two meanings. In the one case, it is our density. In this case, it is the radius from the origin to the outside part of the graph. We're just going to have to come to terms with the fact that that's going to happen sometimes, where symbols get used differently, especially between math and sciences. Um, they get uh, reused for different purposes. But that's theta, that's phi, that's rho, and I already know that theta is 0 to 2 pi, and that phi is 0 to pi divided by 4. And rho is always 0 to 5 units. The sphere's radius is always um, 5. And the reason we don't see the equation of the cone in here is the cone's main purpose was to give us the angle phi. That's all it did. It didn't give us a radius boundary or a theta boundary. Now, please note, it is not 100% finished. This function is still not in the form appropriate. It's just a generic uh, density function. And I believe I gave you what density is equal to. Now, z is equivalent to rho cosine of phi in our spherical conversions. A list of formulas you should keep close by if not going to memorize them. So, finishing touches, mass is 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi divided by 4, 0 to 5, constant times rho cosine of phi, rho squared sine of phi, d rho, d phi, d theta. All right, so far so good. All right, so mass is equal to that following triple integral. Now we're gonna look at a similar example. Just make a slight variation to our original problem here. Okay, just a slight variation. So here we go. What if the cap wasn't a sphere, but a horizontal plane, z equals 2. We have a cone, and we have z equals 2, and we're just going to find volume in this case. So if I have a cone, x, y, z, and the top of the cone is two units above the x, y plane, what would be different about our calculation um, if we want to find, of course, the volume of our, 
of our, our cone. So once again, top view. Primary purpose of the top view in spherical coordinates is to give me my values for theta. And we should know by now that that rotates fully around the z-axis. A nice little circle. Now, I do believe it wouldn't be difficult to prove that the if the height is 2, that this is also 2 by just letting z equals 2 here, and you'll have a circle of radius 2. That guarantees a 45-degree angle there. I'm getting ahead of myself, but remembering to think about pieces out loud so that you have the ability to process it also. So 0 to 2 pi. When I look at my side view, y-axis, z-axis, and I'm really kind of thinking of this in terms of what would we see in the first octant if I was standing at the x-axis and looking this way. Remember, there's x shooting straight at the camera. But now that's a horizontal top. Two units up, that's two, and that's two, and the angle phi is zero to pi divided by four. So I have two of the three sets of information I need for my triple integral. But I want to do one more thing with a side view. Side view. Z, Y. And here's part of that cone in the first octant. I want you to note that the radius, what we call row measures from the origin to the outside farthest away from the origin points possible. And if we're aiming straight up when angle phi is zero, I have here um, two units. But as I go down here, I end up getting farther and farther away from the origin. All right, a little background noise can't avoid. So rho goes from zero to this horizontal plane, which has the equation z equals two. But z is rho cosine of phi and a row equals form that's 2 over cosine which is 2 times secant all right I don't expect memorization of all of these in my class I do expect that you can take a given piece of information such as z is 2 and convert it to the necessary variable with our conversion formulas readily available. So our volume of one, two, three, triple integral, sine rho squared sine of phi, d rho, d phi, d theta, where theta goes from zero to two pi, and phi from zero to pi over four, and rho goes from 0 to 2 secant of phi. There you have it. Another couple of variations on the spherical integral. We're nearly done with the introduction phase for this.